painting today is not what I would call fine art. It is simply a decorator piece. It is something anyone can do. Most of my videos and live paints are geared toward beginners who want to break into just trying out their hand at painting. And what we're going to paint is just a sunset and some palm trees. Easy, easy, easy. So what we're going to do, I'm just using a plain one inch brush, my very experienced old beat up brush. I'm going to just grab some purple or violet. And we're just going to shoot a little bit in. I'm immediately going to, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to dip into some navy blue. And just kind of get those two working together. Now the brush is very wet, which means Oddly enough, that it will dry quicker. And then from the navy blue into phthalo blue, with just a touch of white. And this makes kind of a dusky blue. Do is kind of hello Tina welcome glad to have you with us and what I'm going to do is just kind of pull these colors together uh, from bottom to top just flick it up into the darker color and, oh no where did it go don't worry it'll be back with the brush of white back into the purple and just repeat the process you, good to have you here haven't seen you in a while what we're doing is we're just softening up those colors. Just making it a little softer. While everything is wet, kind of letting them blend together. A little bit of white on the hood. Well, we love having you here, girl. Tina was just saying, this is a nice, easy one that anyone can do. Just something fun to, to kind of play around with acrylic paint and make something you can hang on a wall. So I'm going to dip into some kind of a pink tone. Tina says, life got me sidetracking all the time. Oh, well. Yeah, I hear you go. A little more of the pink and a little white. And I have not yet cleaned the brush. I'm just working from one tone to another. Since they're going to blend on the canvas, why not let them just blend on the brush? And then we're going to go directly into the white. There's a brush of white. More white down to about that one-third line, which is our magic ratio. Nice and easy. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it a little bit past that, just because I, I may want to do a water reflection here, so we'll, we'll get some, some of that pink working in here too. You know, color can get you a long way down the road just spreading it around. And this is not a complicated painting, folks. This is a very, very easy one. I've done several of these for my son just to decorate his new home he moved into. What I think I want to do is I'm going to grab a clean brush. <coughs> I'm going to go right into just a plain old cad yellow. Yellow is a transparent color, but if I go over this white with it, it'll give us a nice kind of 
streak of sunset happening through there. And then skip a little bit of that white, and bring it on down into the water a little bit. I'll mix the yellow and the pink. up into the sky there and then a little light rub just across the horizon there okay, get a little more white I'm just gonna imply that maybe the sun's over here a little more white we're letting it just mix with the yellow Bring it up a little bit. A little more white. There we go. We're not trying to scream from the rooftops that, hey, here's where the sun is. We're just suggesting it's there. All right. I need to slow down with this painting so easy. I'll be done in a minute. You can literally knock these things out very quickly. Hello, my dear Aunt Carolyn. Welcome. All right, so I'm going to make a... I don't use black in my paintings except to tint other colors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some raw umber and phthalo blue to make a darkest dark. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want one of my little cheapo chip brushes for this. Just make sure you get it completely dry. Just an El Cheapo less than a dollar brush. I'm going to mix that phthalo blue, raw umber. It's going to make a very, very dark, <clears throat> excuse me, color. So just down here, I'm just going to scribble it in. And we're just making little <clears throat> indications that there's some foliage down here. There we go. Just a few little dabs up above it. Simple as that. I almost messed up and got paint on my on my favorite Hawaiian shirt. Let me block the camera with it for a second. There we go. I'm not wearing my schmuck. So I did a painting yesterday that got, or day before yesterday, that got the least love of any painting I've ever done, <laughs> ever. So I think out of pure spite, I'm going to give it away to somebody that doesn't want it. <laughs> Let's brighten up. Yellow just a little bit. Just maybe one band of it. A little more intense. There we go. Now, this painting is, by the way, something I do with my students when they're learning to paint to illustrate the importance of contrast. Color is important in painting, that's why paints come in colors, but contrast is king. Contrast is everything. So you always want to make sure you establish a big difference between your lightest light and your darkest dark. There we go. 
There we go. Now look at that. Look at that hot, hazy sun going down. And then just as easy as you please. Actually, I'm going to do a little trick here. I am going to paint some palm trees in silhouette. But I think what I'm going to try to do is backlight them. I'll make sure this is dry enough. Nope, not quite so. I'll get some white. White and cad yellow. And I'm going to put this in behind. <coughs> excuse me. Before I paint over the top of it with the uh, palm trees. You see that blue coming through there? Not really a problem since it's going to be dark anyway. This is a technique, I guess you'd call it. I guess I better speak up. I had someone say they couldn't hear me last time. Um, this is a technique I learned from, I wish I could remember that guy's name. There's another artist online. He does a lot of stuff like this. I can't even remember his name. Bob, somebody over there. I'll post it in the link later. And we're just going to have two of the smaller trees on this side. So the big boys over here. All right. Now, get the brush completely clean and go into your darkest dark, same color I used down here. I'm going to test it out down here. Not quite dry enough yet. So I'm going to let that dry for just a second before we can do our neat little special effect. Tina well, says, You are Griffin Bob Ross. Very beautiful work you do. Well, thank you so much, Tina. That's very kind of you. I have a, uh, let me show it here. Uh, someone gave me this a couple of Christmases ago. I keep it hanging on the wall. Put it here. The world's coolest talking keychain. Let's see if it still talks. I'm going to put it up here so we can all see it. <laughs> and let's see if he still talks. Uh oh. <laughs> no, that battery is long dead. It's just, I've, I've kept it in the package <laughs> and hanging on the wall in my studio. So while I'm waiting on that, those, you know, why are the trees yellow? Trust me. While I'm waiting on that to dry, I'm just going to kind of bring out a few little limbs here. Tina said awesome. Who gave that to me? I don't even remember. Was it Jessica? I don't know if I remember either. Just little hints of limbs and old bracken hanging out down here. You don't have to put these in. Again, if you're a beginner, you don't want to mess with it. You don't have to. This just adds a little something extra for the eye to look at. Now, I think... Tina says we need to get you a Bob Ross tea up it. <laughs> I'm going to get a Bob Ross wig and put it on my bald head. Maybe there's a happy little twig. I always like to think of giving the viewer something to look at in my paintings. So I think as I stand back and look, and never forget, I always take a step back and look at your work. I'm always thinking... You know, gosh, could there be something else here? All right. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and... 
Oh, I got to put in the tree tops too. Y'all forget me. I forgot my brain today. Maria Wall says, I have a wig if you want to use it. You're welcome <laughs> to it. <laughs> hey, Maria, welcome. All right, so I'm going to just kind of put in. Tina says, I can imagine being there looking, looking at the trees. Yeah, I wish I was on a beach somewhere right now. Don Harrison says, Hiya, Christopher B. Hey, you Don. Good to have you, buddy. Welcome to the studio. And again, I haven't lost my mind. I'm not painting yellow palm trees. This is to backlight the palm trees. Tina Johnson says, not in the Gulf, you don't. Weather's bad. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's right. My stepdaughter, Tacey's daughter, is just coming from down there. Yep. She said there were tornado warnings everywhere. So again, this is just a little decorator piece, something you can paint yourself and throw it up on the walls of your home and really be proud of it, enjoy it. Let's put a few more here. I'm just tapping down. That's all I'm doing. It's a very easy touch. And I'm making these a little bigger than they need to be because the inside is going to be dark. And I want that little halo to shine through that they're going to have. You'll see what I'm going to just do. Ooh, that's thick. Just, like I said, a nice little easy something that anybody can do. I always think of Miami Vice when I, when I do this, that TV show from the 80s. All right. Clean the brush. Get the sip of the coffee. trying to be mindful to stay out of the way of the camera, so I apologize if I block your view. Alright, a little more blue, a little umber brown. Tina says it reminds me of the airbrush t-shirts. Yeah, from the 80s, I remember those. Alright, just going to come in here. And paint down the center of the trees. Just letting enough of that yellow show from behind to make it look like it's silhouetted. She says, yep, yeah, but quit telling people our age. <laughs> <laughs> I am ashamed. I earned it. We lived through some times. I should have done the outline in pink. I don't know what I was thinking. That would have been prettier. She says, yeah, me too. We had the best time to grow up, though. We did. No doubt about it. The 80s was good. I love me 
in some 80s. Still the best music ever. Styles and the clothes we might take, <laughs> take a pass on. All right, same thing over here. You know you like you some parachute pants. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was parachuting in the 80s. Some people didn't realize that gravity was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yeah, we could have done better. <laughs> But in fairness, it's not like we've done much better since either. At least we knew. She said, oh, I liked my pants too. <laughs> <laughs> At least we knew where our waist was and didn't wear our pants below our butt. Can I get an amen? <laughs> oh, that's probably going to offend some of my younger viewers. He's not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Christian, this one's for you, so I have to go with your collection. So when you come down tomorrow, you can have it. Tina says, well, I've changed to mostly pink, wearing mostly pink. You went from wearing mostly pink to wearing mostly pink? No, I've changed to wearing mostly oh, pink. Oh, okay. All right. And then she says, hey, me then. <laughs> And then just repeat over here. Make sure you get that center nice and dark. Tina's telling me buy him parachute pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's talking about Christian. <laughs> Lord, if I put those on right now, I'd never be able to get back out of them again. <laughs> Definitely not meant for uh, us girthy fellows. Christian says nice, but I'm not wearing pants then either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the door's always open to you, son. Anybody else who shows up must be wearing pants, so just so. Uh, Tina says bring him to the, into the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get my son some parachute pants, see how he does. All right. <coughs> A little darker over here. Get him some of them Ross Geller leather pants. Yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. All right, that's about all there is to this. I think I'm going to try, just try, to take my liner brush and put a little bit of pink on the side of the tree. If it doesn't work, I'll wipe it off. Works better. Guys, it doesn't get any simpler than this for painting. Tina says we're maybe snakeskin pants. <laughs> oh, good Lord have mercy. All right, so what we've got going on is just a sunset. Uh, it's a, I'm going to call this one Miami Vice Sunset. Uh, on screen, I know this doesn't look as dark as it is here in the studio. It's because of my lighting in here. But basically, you've just got the light shining from behind, so the trees are backlit. And a nice silhouette in front of a pretty radiated sunset. Easy peasy. Um, please feel free to duplicate this one. Occupational hazard. Tina says we're in Florida, living it up. LOL is my name. All right, living it up. Or, you know, Buford, Hilton Head, God's Country. 
<laughs> and what time do it be? 6.32. All right, we're going to call this one quits. It is finished. Um, it is not complicated. This is something any of you can do. I encourage you to do them. It's a good uh, exercise in contrast and composition. So, <coughs> think about your rule of thirds. Make a tic-tac-toe on it and pick spots that just add that heavy interest. And you do that with color or contrast behind your composition. And you'll have a lovely little something to hang on the walls.